Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is the Top Delinquent, Chapter 23, and this one is titled Panic, Not at the Disco. Later that afternoon, Ida was madly preparing for the court hearing and had called his family lawyer for the 15th time that week. Leave it with me, Ida, the lawyer said from the other end of the phone. I'll do my best to settle this out of court with maximum compensation for your friend. If they refuse, I can push for more money due to trauma induction. Yes, sir. Ida said with purpose, straightening in his chair as he spoke to the family attorney. I wouldn't want any more undue stress to your friend, she's been through enough, so if we can avoid her having to face her offender again then that is the most ideal option, the legal practitioner continued. I will talk to the accused's lawyer and come to an agreement. Very much appreciated, sir. I am most grateful for your expertise, Ida said as he pushed his chair back and bowed in his seat, still holding the phone to his ear. You are welcome, Ida. Your family have a wonderful reputation and it is a very honourable trait. You're wanting to protect people from the injustices of the world, the lawyer confirmed. I regret to inform, sir, that I have fallen romantically for the victim of this case and thus it appears that I have an ulterior motive spurred by my affections for her, Ida admitted bashfully, a pink blush dusting his cheeks as he straightened and adjusted his glasses while clearing his throat gently. That doesn't matter to me, the lawyer said with a soft chuckle. However, I do have an unrelated question to the case, but do you plan on revealing your affections for her? Yes, sir. I would be a coward not to, Ida replied. I plan on writing a letter of confession at the conclusion of this court case. Very good, young Ida. I'll make sure that the outcome of the case is favourable so that she is more than likely to accept your confession and return your feelings. Were that to be the case, I would be indebted to you, sir, Ida said as he swiftly bowed in his seat again. All the best, the lawyer said with a gentleness in his voice. I am sure your earnestness will be felt. Much appreciated. Thank you for your encouragement, Ida replied as he then said a short farewell and hung up the phone. Now, he thought to himself, time to write this confession letter. He slid his chair forward to his desk and reached out, taking his favourite pen from the pen jar and a pristine white piece of paper. Then he held the pen over the paper, his mind instantly going blank as he tried to think of the best way to start the note. Dearest Yin Lin, he wrote, I am very good with words, until it comes to you. You lay on your bed, taking deep breaths in to try and calm yourself, but the more you told yourself not to panic, the more your chest tightened and you began to panic. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, no stress. Don't stress. Don't stress. It's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's no, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I don't want to do this. I don't want to face him. I can't see him again. No, please don't. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go to court. Your mind rambled and babbled, sharp explosive breaths rattling in your chest as you hyperventilated, stressing about having to appear in court on the weekend. I don't ever want to see him again. I don't want to remember. I don't want to be asked questions. How do I make this go away? I need help. Please, don't make me do this. Hot tears streamed down your face as you gripped your hands into the bed sheets, sobbing uncontrollably as terror seized you to the core and you lost yourself to the panic attack. Suddenly your phone rang beside you and you grabbed it, pressing it to your ear as you rolled onto your stomach and cried into the receiver. Help me. I don't feel good. Help me. Please help me. You wailed into the phone. Yin. Ida's authoritative voice called from the other end. Where are you? Home. You gasped, still hyperventilating. I'm coming, he said quickly. Stay on the line. You heard doors slamming and running footsteps from his end of the phone, his breathing starting to become heavier as he bolted down the street in the direction of your house. Ida, you sobbed. Ida, please. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's okay. I'm on my way, he panted, still running full tilt down the street. Please come. I'm coming. Help me. Hold on for me, Yin. Don't hang up. Stay where you are. I'm on my way. Please. I'm coming. I'm right here. I'm not leaving. And the conversation continued in short bursts until he rounded the corner to your house. I'm going to hang up, but I'm at your house. I'll be up soon, Ida rasped as he took the phone from his ear and knocked loudly on your front door. Your mum was the first to get to the door and she opened it. Who are you? Begging your pardon, madam. But your daughter, Yin, needs me. My sincerest apologies for my intrusion, but I must get to her, he said before slipping past her and running up the stairs. Who the hell do you think you are? 
Your dad hollered drunkenly from the lounge when he saw Ida run up the stairs. Get the hell out of my house! But Ida was on a mission. You heard the commotion outside your door and sat up, a new wave of panic washing over you as you heard footsteps approaching. <gasps> no! No! You screamed internally, body shaking uncontrollably with the petrified adrenaline that was now coursing through it. Ida knocked briefly on your door before opening it, and the minute you saw him you stumbled off your bed and threw your arms around him, and he, you, holding your quivering form against his. I'm here, he said soothingly, his firm, strong arms around you making you feel like you were wrapped in the world's best security blanket. I told you to get the hell out, your dad bellowed as he stumbled up the stairs, laboured breathing making him sound that much more terrifying. You caught sight of him as he made his way towards your room, and your face paled when you saw he had a half-empty beer bottle in his hand and was swinging it with purpose. You'd seen him do this many times before, before using it as a weapon, and you let out a scream as he approached you. Ida, look out! You hollered at the top of your lungs. I'm just gonna, you know, duck before I get hit for that cliffhanger. Stay tuned, tomorrow, chapter 24 will be up, I promise.